In this lecture, we'll understand how the attenuation happens and we'll talk about the type of reflectors. My name is Joe and I help people understand ultrasound physics and pass the SPI exam. Attenuation happens in three events. The first one is the absorption and absorption is conversion of the ultrasound energy to heat. The second one is the reflection and the reflection happens when the sound wave strike a boundary and it reflects back. It can reflect back to the transducer or it can reflect to uh, somewhere else. It depends on the type of the reflector. Scattering. A scattering consider a type of reflection, but on scattering, the uh, most of the sound energy doesn't return back to the transducer in, and it travels in different direction. What is attenuation depend on? Attenuation depend on three factors. First, the medium. So, uh, for example, the air have more attenuation than the bone. The bone have more attenuation than soft tissue, and water have the lowest attenuation. That's why we use the gel in ultrasound because it have less attenuation. We can use a, a full bladder, a urinary bladder as an acoustic window to look at the uterus. Also, because air have a high attenuation, that's why also we use the gel to fill the air between the transducer and the skin. Also the gel because the gel have an acoustic impedance between the matching layer and the skin. The second factor is the depth. And when the depth increase, the attenuation increase. Frequency. When frequency increase, the attenuation increase. Now we'll talk about the type of reflector. We have two types of reflector: the specular reflector and diffuse or backscatter reflector. Spectral reflector have a very smooth surface. Example for this smooth surface, like a mirror, or even like this whiteboard. This whiteboard have a smooth surface that's why it is a very strong reflector and that's why you can see the light reflecting here on the whiteboard as you can see right now one of the advantage of the specular reflector it have a very strong reflection a disadvantage for the specular reflector that it will not return to the transducer unless it's 90 degree for example here the transducer is not perpendicular to the surface, that's why the sound beam will not return, it will reflect to somewhere else. And if it's perpendicular, like here, the reflection return back to the transducer. And this can cause a lot of artifact. Uh, example for the artifact that it can happen with a speaker reflector is a mirror artifact. Uh, and we can eliminate this artifact by making the transducer perpendicular the second uh, type of reflection is a diffuse or backscatter reflector. The backscatter reflector happens when the surface is irregular or not smooth. Advantage of the diffuse reflector is that the sound beam will return back to the transducer even if the transducer is not perpendicular with the reflector. The disadvantage is that the reflection is very weak. Why it's very weak? Because some of this reflection will go away from the transducer and it will not return to the transducer. That's why the uh, diffuse reflector is very weak reflection. Now we'll talk about the scattering. A scattering happens when the tissue is less than or equal to the lambda. Lambda is the wavelength. When that happens, the reflection is randomly move in a different direction, as you see here. The relay scattering happens when the structure is much more smaller than the wavelength. Relay scattering is directly related to the frequency, the power of four. When relay scattering happens, sound wave travel equally in all direction. Of relay scattering is a red blood cell. 
because red blood cell is much more smaller than the wavelength. Attenuation coefficient. We use the attenuation coefficient to measure the attenuation. This abbreviation, we call it alpha. We use it as an abbreviation for the attenuation coefficient. The unit for attenuation coefficient is decibel per centimeter over hertz. In soft tissue, the attenuation coefficient is equal to 0.5 decibel per centimeter per hertz. How to use the attenuation coefficient to measure the attenuation or the total attenuation? We multiply the attenuation coefficient by the length. The length here is the depth and multiply it by the frequency. So from here we can tell that the attenuation increase when the attenuation coefficient increase and the attenuation increase when the depth increase and the attenuation increase when the frequency increase. Thank you for watching and see you in the next lecture.